When God gives you a dream, others may discourage you, but God wants you to dream on and keep on keeping on. At a very young age, Ernie's desire was to sing for Jesus, and he's been fulfilling that desire ever since. A native of Indiana, Ernie grew up loving quartet music in the legendary cathedrals. Little did he know that one day he would be part of that group and marry one of the legendary group members' daughter, Lisa. Later, he formed Ernie Haas in the Signature Sound, and his songs have earned Grammy nominations, Dove Awards, and Billboard Christian Top Tens. But in the face of grief, his message is keep on keeping on. This is his story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Nashville. Ernie, it's so great to be with you on Music Row today. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And it's so wonderful to, yeah. to meet you and a Hoosier. A fellow Hoosier, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Newburgh, Indiana, and I've traveled the world telling everybody where is it. And they're all like, where's Newburgh? <laughs> you know what? People from Indiana, they're just wonderful, aren't they, we? Oh, well, <laughs> we are. We, we got uh, a lot to be proud of in that state. And, and it's just a good place to raise a family. Yeah. And so, Tell me about your life growing up. Well, there in little Newburgh, Indiana, it was just everything was wrapped around church and uh, sports. You know, I, I played baseball, football. And, of course, you get this because you're a Hoosier. Mm -hmm. uh, Every driveway had a basketball goal. Yes. And so it's not like there was one that we just shared. So everyone had one. and uh, It was and so all was basketball. Always, it was basketball. And, and then we'd set up uh, some little floodlights and we'd play all night long. So, yeah, it's just it was a great way to, to, to grow up. And uh, I, I guess it was, we, were, we were sheltered, mm -hmm. you know, from the world. Uh, and, but, you know, um, that's just... I just can't not thank my parents enough for, for raising us that way and, uh, and seeing the value in it. And they're still there. My, and my brother, they? they're still in Newburgh, Indiana. And so I still call it my home. They're my people. And, uh, and so it's just um, a, and a great way to learn music, too. Uh, they, there was a lot of different types of music in our high school. And so I still I talk to my high school um, music director. She's 92 years old now, wow. Mrs. Kathy Ewing. And... You know, so there was church music, there was uh, choral music, there was barbershop. Uh, I was in a 50s doo-wop band. Uh, you name it, I sung it. But I, I gravitated towards the gospel music. Well, I read that you knew that you loved gospel music at the age of eight. Yeah, well, music was always in our house. We, we would do things at our, at our house called cottage prayer meetings. So that was when revival was coming to our church. We'd always gather at our house, and there'd be prayer meetings to pray that God would just bless it and anoint the service and, and pray for anybody to, that needed salvation. You know, so we'd have those times, and I was always the one, hey, Ernie, lead us in a song. You know, so I'd stand on the piano bench and start singing, Victory in Jesus. And so pretty much... Uh, after that, they would say, okay, Ernie, that's enough. <laughs> Go away. Because <laughs> I would never, I put on a concert for them, you know. But yeah, that's, gospel was where I gravitated towards. And the story goes, this is the condensed version. Um, second grade, I came home from school. Of course, I don't remember this, but just out of my mind with horrible headaches. Mm -hmm. And I had a really bad case of spinal meningitis. They had to do three spinal taps oh, no. in one day. So it was just... Uh, a difficult time for my parents especially. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember being in ICU and all that. And um, God touched me. I, I came out of it with no side effects. Just a little loss of hearing in the right side here. And my mom said there was a day she, I came up to her and said, can I sing for Jesus? She said, yeah, absolutely. And, she, and he, I said, no, I want to 
travel. That's what I want to do with my life. I want to sing for Jesus. And, uh, so you she made tells that, that story. decision at a very young age. Yeah, something something happened. Uh, I think it was because of those prayer meetings, mm -hmm. and then at church singing, and then we'd always go to nursing homes and we'd sing. I just think I like the connectivity of mm -hmm. being able to not only perform but connect people to Jesus, and so and so that given my life to that. I'm going into my 34th year of touring singing and riding and singing for Jesus. Yeah. Tell me when you made the decision to follow Jesus at a young age. Was this at the yeah. time? Yeah, I think it was about um, age five or six. And, uh, and I, I'll tell you, I've doubted this because as you're older, you, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. past, so you, there's some things you may have forgotten about that decision. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was five, I was in Sunday school. And I gave my heart to the Lord, and I doubted that decision. It's just not fair to judge a five-year-old's decision, because it really is a pure... I, th I think a lot of people, you're, you're right, they, they'll say, oh, how did they really know what they're doing? Or, yeah, you know. and then I self-doubted. Mm -hmm. We, uh, this was probably 12 years ago, we were doing a, a Gaither videotaping at the Cove in Asheville, North Carolina. I had just mm -hmm. read um, Mrs. Graham's book, you know, and she was raised in a Christian home, and uh, she said there was never a time she didn't know Jesus. And she said, it just was not fair to judge a little girl's heart. It was kind of the same little verbiage that I was thinking in my mind. So I went up to her and I told her, I said, I have struggled with assurance mm -hmm. all my life. And she grabbed my hand. She said, Ernie, rest in Jesus. This isn't about you. It's about what he did for you. Oh, that's... And so it was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders that day when when Mrs. Graham said that. So Well, I, I think there's a lot of pressure when people say, when was your spiritual birthday? Yeah. I, when people ask me that, I, I can't give them a date. Can you give them a date? I mean, Not I on just, a calendar, no. no. Mm -mm. And um, so I agree with you. I know the, the time, yeah. but I, I don't have a spiritual date. And sometimes people look at you like, well, don't you remember? And I, Well, we're not widgets. <laughs> I mean, everybody's I love, different. But I love, you know, what um, Mrs. Ruth Graham said, said mm -hmm. yeah. Well, like I said, we're not we're not bots, you know. Mm -hmm. So so everybody's personal decision to follow Christ is just that. Mm -hmm. It's personal. And mm -hmm. so um, that's my story and I'm I'm glad I have that story. God has um, allowed me to to go tell that story to a lot of people and and I tell it to young people when we do uh, those kind of events and I just say, "Hey, listen. You can go and you can spend your life trying to figure it out." And then have a lot of regrets, and a lot of scars, and a lot of emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. um, I've never known anybody that said, I wished I'd waited to give my life to Jesus. So if you're five, six, seven, come to Jesus. You'll never regret it. No, that's a great message. What happened after high school? Well, after high school, well, I had a, uh, I had a partial music and baseball scholarship. So I pursued that. But in the back of my mind, I was just, I had heard a quartet. And it was called the Cathedral Quartet. So I was 16, 17 years old when I heard them. So everything was being formed by that, that fateful night when I heard them because that was the culmination of wanting to sing for Jesus, wanting to perform, loving to wear a suit and tie. <laughs> I mean, those guys were the embodiment of everything that I wanted to do. And so, uh, so after you know, a year of, of school, um, I got a call from the Cathedral Quartet of all people and said, hey, we followed you, we've heard you, and, and um, we're going to have to m make a decision on, on a new tenor vocalist, and would you consider singing with us? Oh, man. It was like, that, and that was seven years after I first heard them. So I prayed that night at 16, Lord, let me sing with them. And then that night they called, and he answered my prayer seven years later. So God's delays are definitely not denials. I love that. Seven years. It's God's perfect number. It is. It is. I never thought of that. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Yeah, God, God uh, has been so good to reveal himself. And, and we have a God that speaks. <laughs> and so, although I've never heard his audible voice, his spirit speaks louder than words sometimes. So I'm just so thankful for those moments in my life when, when he spoke and, and, and guided me. And, and the thing is, you were talking about a date on the counter of, of salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, we are being saved every day, so he keeps speaking, and we got to keep listening. 
And so um, he's so faithful. He is. He loves to bless us. And look what he did. He blessed you with the desire the of desire your heart. Of my heart. Mm -hmm. So when I when I counsel people and, and you know like what I do with my life, I said Psalms thirty seven four has been a, a, one of my favorite scriptures. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. And what that means, I think I'm being proper when I say this. It's not that He gives you everything you want. But if you're delighting in Him, those desires that are in your heart, you follow that because He's putting them there. And so I can't take credit even for the desire of wanting to sing for Him. It's all a gift of grace. It is. It is. So you started with the cathedrals. I did. And what happened after that? So they were based out of, um, you guys will appreciate this, with the broadcast company of Cornerstone. Um, the first, what I would call, televangelist, the first one to really do it in a grand way was Rex Hubbard mm -hmm. at the Cathedral Tomorrow in Akron, Ohio. So he wanted a quartet on his TV show. So he got these great singers from the Weatherfords and the Imperials and so and the Blue Ridge Quartet. So he put together a quartet called the Cathedral Quartet. And um, that's how the cathedrals got their start in 1964 mm -hmm. in Akron, Ohio. So when they called me, I moved to to Akron, Stowe, Ohio. That's my primary and how residence. how old were you? I was 25. Okay. That's my primary residence. I moved there, and um, the co-founder, George Yance, one of the co-founders, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I met his daughter, Lisa. 1990 was a great year for me. Not only did I get my dream job, I met my dream girl. And uh, so Did you know right away when you met her? I did. Did she? I did. Yes, and here's, here's what's it. So Lisa's a homebody. She's very quiet. She's, she's like her, her mother was, just, just ready, ready to sit in the corner and, and read her book. Her, so her sister, she's got three sisters, and they're all like, we got to get Lisa fixed up. You know, after high school and stuff, you know, she just had her little, she was happy to be home, living at home with mom and dad. And uh, she said, y'all leave me alone, I'm fine. And uh, so her sister said this, well, looks like God's going to have to bring somebody through the front door. And when the cathedrals hired me, about three weeks later, they asked me to go come over and eat dinner. I walked in the front door. And uh, as the story goes, uh, one of the sisters lives in Atlanta, and uh, the, the one was calling Atlanta and saying, hey, this guy that sings for Dad, he just walked in the front door, and I, Lisa is beside herself, I can tell. And, uh, and I was too. So it was like, it was, just, it was, it was meant to be. And... Uh, as George said, my father-in-law said, lightning flashed and thunder rolled, and eight <laughs> months later, they got married. <laughs> eight months later. Yes, because on, on, on our bus, the cathedral bus, I mean, we were, we were working 220 dates a year, concerts a year, and gone all the time. So you got two weeks off in August, two weeks off in December. So um, that was close, close to August, too close to, to plan a wedding. So it was, it was a December wedding. So tell me what it's like to be on the... The Road with the Cathedrals, uh, newlywed, mm -hmm. and what life was. Because a lot of people, you know, they see the glamour of it, but did you have challenges? Did you have any trials? Going yeah, on? just the separation was the hard part. Um, and then she was still working full time. So when I came home, I get home on a Monday morning, had to leave Wednesday midnight. You know, I was just seeing her in the morning, evening, and, and then I would go pick her up for lunch to have time together. So that that's that's. Um, that's what I call the working years. I mean, you got to pay your dues, you got to work hard, uh, but you see the end in, in, in sight. Is that uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna one of these days we're gonna s set back. So this last December was 30 years for us, and with uh, with that 30 year anniversary coming in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. and being home, mm -hmm. and being together day after day after day, um, it what was, was that like? it was great because. I, I, it confirmed everything I knew. I married my best friend, and you know, all these years separated because of touring. It was like God was redeeming the time, allowing us to, to share things. So that's the that's the the next phase of my life, is to still do what I do. I love to work for Him. Um, I love to be busy. I'm not one to, to wake up in the morning and just sit all day long. That's not me. Um, but I do like our walks, and. Uh, if I knew that this was my last day on earth, I wouldn't be sitting right here. I, w I would be with Lisa walking around a lake in Hudson, Ohio, uh, holding hands and checking out God's beautiful creation. She sounds wonderful. She's, she's pretty special. So after the cathedrals, you went out on your own. When was that? 
They retired in December of 1999. So I was with them the last 10 years of their ministry. And they were together over 40 years. And so I got to be on their coattail on the last you know, 10 years was of their scary ministry. When they it, it was. decided to retire? And... It was. I was in the room where it happened. <laughs> I was in the kitchen and, and it was just a, you know, George said, you know, I, he told his, his partner, Glenn Payne, he said, I got the doctor's report and I got to have to go on dialysis. My kidneys are failing. Mm. And then we always said we'd go out together. Um, I think if I can get through this one more year and tell everybody goodbye, uh, that'd be doing good. And they hugged and said, let's Let's do this. So they, they, 1999 was a farewell tour, and we, we, it was just bedlam. You know, mm -hmm. the sad part of that was, and we wouldn't have written this story this way. Um, Glenn Payne passed away in September, uh, I think maybe October, with just six weeks left mm -hmm. of our final tour. Mm -hmm. So they really didn't get to even to finish together, and um, you know that that was a hard thing, hard pill to swallow. And then my father-in-law being sick, and all these things were happening. And then I. I lose my dream job, unemployed, you know. So um, with COVID, I got to remind myself, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be okay. God has never forsaken. He's never had his son, daughter begging for bread. And so the Lord is my shepherd. I so, shall not want. So when they ended and um, you were at that point, that turning point, what did you do? Well, a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. And back to Psalms 37, 4. You know, what do I want to do? What's the desire of my heart? Mm -hmm. And after having such a great run with cathedrals, how foolish of it, me to think that I could start a quartet to, and do anything mm -hmm. of value compared to what I just did. But in my prayers, I kept hearing the Lord make harmony. Keep making harmony. So I started Signature Sound in 2003. And... Uh, been a great run. We've been able to do some things that even the cathedrals didn't get a chance to do. And so um, God is faithful is all I can say. Ernie, I love how God works. You started Signature Sound. Tell me about it. Ooh, well, to have, I sing first tenor. All right, so that's a demanding position in a quartet, Southern Gospel Quartet mm -hmm. especially. And then because of, of, you know, owning the group and starting the group, I'm the front guy, so I'm, I'm, I'm emceeing, so there's really no break in between there. And so um, it's been an adjustment period. And then also to lead, you know. Mm -hmm. When I was with the cathedrals, I wasn't a leader. I was an employee. I was a young guy. You know, I was following the guy's examples. And now I had to grow up. Quit being such a, one of the guys, so to speak. And but so, you had great mentors. I, I did, but I, I kind of fought it, and people should know that, you know. And people have spoken into me and saying, you're, you're a really good leader, Ernie, or you're a visionary, or you got ideas. I don't see that about me. It's just, I'm just doing me. I'm just going out and just waking up every morning just doing what I do. But the responsibility of owning a group, managing a group, emceeing, writing songs, all like that, it got really heavy really quick. And so there were some times where I just needed help. I needed spiritual guidance from somebody who could, who could give, me, give that to me. And so there are people who, who see us and see what we do, and they think, you know, well, maybe we got a, a corner on the market of joy and happiness and, mm -hmm. and hearing God's voice. It's, it's like Jacob. It's a wrestling match, and you got to keep wrestling. you got to keep wanting to know God, and you want got to keep wanting to be more like Him. And it's like Jesus said to the guy at the pool, what do you want? Mm -hmm. I want to be well, okay. And so uh, I've enjoyed working together with Christ, working not only on my crap, but letting him work on me. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. And nothing teaches you more than loss, sorrow, and, trials. And you've had some of that in your life Absolutely. recently. Yeah, we've lost. It's been a season of loss these mm -hmm. last five or six years. Uh, I spoke how close my family is. My wife lost her sister and lost two of her sisters in the last few years. And it was very quick and very sudden. Mm. And then her mom during this past year of COVID uh, passed away. And then loss comes in different shapes and forms. Yes. I lost my job again. <laughs> you know, I, for a whole year we were not touring. How did you handle that? Uh, some dark days. Um, you know, my primary residence is in Northeast Ohio, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and those of, who are from that area know that we don't have a lot of light in January and February. So there was a lot of dark days, figuratively and literally. And just talking to the Lord. And, uh, you know, I just felt him say to me, keep on. Keep on keeping on. If you got one more breath, take one more step, rise up in faith. So God started pouring his light into my heart and my life. And usually when that happens, a song's about ready to be written, you know. So, uh, Well, tell me about keeping on. Yeah, so we got in the studio recently and recorded 14 new songs that I had a chance to help write the majority of them. And they came from those dark days. Mm -hmm. So let me just say this. The, the songs are, are not dark. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the light that God shed in my heart. Um, but they came from some dark times. Keeping On is the new record, the title song. Uh, Keep On, Keeping On is a, um, is a message that I share to, to God's people. Can you I, sing a few? Well, every line in the first, I don't, I'm not featured on the song, but let me see if I can, if I can, the first, the first verse are lines that I have quoted to my family this past year. These, these are some dark days. We've had some heartache, more than enough. Mm -hmm. Long, long are those cold nights. Feels like there's no light. But fear says give up. But I'm here to tell you Keep on keeping on. I'm here to tell you, God will make you strong. Mm. If all you've got left is just one more breath, rise up in faith, take one more step. I'm here to tell you, keep on keeping on. Oh, Ernie, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. And I know you're speaking to people right now listening because we have been in dark days. Mm -hmm. So your new songs, Keeping On, are they out? They had just released a few weeks ago. and Of course, it's in retail stores, but uh, you know, however you stream music. Mm -hmm. But um, one way that I would encourage, and, and our website, but what happened with this record there's a song on there that I wrote. It's very upbeat. It sounds like a 70s sitcom. It's called Good to Be Home. And so I got to thinking on those dark days, uh, the Lord kind of just spoke to me and said, methods and means change. My message remains the same. Feed my people. So I sat down in front of my iPhone camera one Friday night and went on Facebook Live and said, how are you doing? Hey. I have watched some. So did you watch yes. some of those webisodes we did? Yes, with all the guys. Yeah. And yes, I did. So after 33 years of touring and singing literally around the world, sitting in our living room, we sang to more people in one week than we could have in two or three years. The effectiveness of the gospel during all of that. So um, because of the Keeping On record, because of the Good To Be Home song that was on that record, uh, this fall, we're going to launch another season of those webisodes it's called Good to Be Home with Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. Same format, same structure, but now it's not about COVID and lockdown. It's about, listen to this, it's about changing culture. You do not change culture mm -hmm. by screaming or by rules or laws. You change it one home at a time. Love begins at home. Forgiveness. Oh, we need that message understanding, so bad. Listening. Mm -hmm. All those things begin at home. And so, as the song says, it's good to be home. If you can't say it's good to be home, let's fix that first. Let's let Christ come in and change that culture. And then I believe that's how you change the world. So where you're on YouTube? And then yeah. on your will it be on Facebook or yeah. where are you going to stream? So if you go to my website, you can find our platforms. YouTube, I always air it on on YouTube and Facebook mm -hmm. Live. And then um, we're getting some networks, some some cable networks. We're getting people uh, asking us if they could broadcast it. So one of the reasons I don't, we're not calling it Friday Night Sing anymore. We're rebranding re it as Good to Be Home, is because some of these people who are asking saying we can't air it on Friday. Would you change the name? So I was like, oh, after all that work. But when I wrote the song, Good to Be Home, I'm like, okay, that's, that's how this is going. So everything's unfolding right now. I don't know how it's going to end, but uh, it's a new season for me and a new way to share the old, old story that never grows old. 
Jesus says, and Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit together can be trusted with everything in your life. Ernie, you are a blessing. Oh, and I you. just want to thank you for encouraging people to keep on. Amen. My friend, are you facing dark times in your life? I want you to know, just like Ernie said, that God is faithful. Amen. Take his hand and let him guide you through and so that you can keep on and share your story of unshakable faith with others that will give him honor and glory. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.